ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله سبحانه وتعالى بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون O praise due to Allah, we praise Him, seek for His assistance and forgiveness, and we seek refuge with Him from evils of our souls and our misdeeds. No one can be misled whosoever Allah guides, and no one can be guided whosoever Allah causes to go astray. I testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. He has no partner. I also testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and the last messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May the peace and the blessings of Allah be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, and all those who followed him and will follow him in righteousness till the day of judgment. Qala Allah ta'ala ba'da a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu hal يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون. Again, O oh you who believe, fear Allah as He should be feared, and die not accept in the state of Islam as Muslims with complete submission to Allah. رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي. Today's khutbah is about Bilal bin Rabah al Habashi رضي الله عنه. He was described as very dark in complexion, slender, very tall, thick-haired, and with a sparse beard. A man that society caged to live as a slave, to serve as a slave, and to die as a slave. This is Bilal bin Rabah al-Habashi, born into slavery in Mecca. He was, he was treated and regarded as the lowest of the lowest of the slaves. He had no family, had no lineage, he had no wealth, had no supporters, but he had heard about Rasulullah's message, which was only but a small message during that time. He heard about the deen of Islam, and he went to the Prophet to hear about this message, because Islam is a revolutionary idea, a revolutionary message, and this message gave hope to the slave. And he embraced Islam because of the light and the hope Islam promised. Umar radiallahu anhu used to say, Abu Bakr is Sayyiduna wa a'taqa Sayyiduna. Abu Bakr is our master and he emancipated our master. Here we can see one of the greatest companions referring to Bilal radiallahu anhu as a Sayyid, leader or master. This is despite Bilal radiallahu anhu having been considered from the bottom of society for the majority of Umar radiallahu anhu's life. In addition, he referred to him in a way as to equate him with the greatest companion of all, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Perhaps one of his greatest virtues is that which was narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu. In the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, qala li Bilal inda salat al-fajr, Ya Bilal, haddithni bi arja amal amiltahu fil islam, fa inni sami'tu dafban alayka bayna yidayya fil jannah. قال قال ما عملت عملا أرجع عندي أن لم أتطهر طهورا في الساعة ليلا أو نهار إلا صليت بذلك الطهور ما كتب لي ما كتب لي أن أصلي. At the time of the Fajr prayer, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم asked Bilal, "Tell me of the best deed you did after embracing Islam, for I heard your footsteps in front of me in paradise." Bilal رضي الله عنه replied. I did not do anything worth mentioning, except that whenever I performed evolution during the day or night, I prayed after that evolution as much as it was written for me. Look at this hadith. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the greatest of all creation to have ever walked on this earth, is informing Bilal Radiallahu Anhu 
that he heard his footsteps in front of him in paradise. Notice Rasulullah did not say he saw his footsteps, but rather he simply heard them. In other words, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, he could recognize his footsteps just from their sound, demonstrating their great intimacy and companionship. Now, on to the first highlight of Bilal life is the immense sabr, the perseverance he displayed at the hands of one of the greatest enemies of Islam, Umayyah bin Khalaf. Bilal was a slave to Umayyah bin Khalaf. And Bilal would often see how Umayyah bin Khalaf would frog from his mouth, kind of like spit, just by hearing the name of the Prophet, just the pure hate. And this pure one is stopped the Prophet from giving the da'wah in Mecca and making people Muslim. But Bilal also noticed that they could not say anything evil about him. The enemies, they hated the Prophet's ideas and they wanted to change his ideas. But they could never say anything. Why? Because they knew the Prophet Muhammad's character was one of the best. And that further increased Bilal al-An's belief in Islam. When Umayyad bin Khalaf found out that Bilal radiallahu anhu had converted to Islam, he turned to Bilal and tortured him. And he tortured him brutally. He stripped Bilal naked and threw him onto the scorching hot coals in the midday heat when the desert was an inferno only for a burning hot boulder which took several men to lift from its place to be thrown onto his body and chest and they'd say to Bilal leave Islam believe in Allah wal Uzza which were the gods of that time yet the only words uttered from his lips were Ahadun Ahad meaning he subhanahu wa ta'ala is one he subhanahu wa ta'ala is one imagine yourself in that situation where they're telling you, what? Disbelieve in Allah. Disbelieve in the message that Rasulullah is giving. And during that time in Mecca, the Muslims weren't a big number at all. It was a very small message during that time. But he continued to say, Ahadun Ahad. He believed. He didn't even, he didn't, he didn't even see the whole Quran yet. Yet, he continued to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Prophet that Muhammad wa sallam, the message that the Prophet Muhammad wa sallam, gave. And said, Ahadun Ahad. And look at how these few words can be in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if they are as simple as Ahadun Ahad. And the mushrikeen couldn't understand how this slave that they deemed to be so weak of will, feeble strength, could bear such an agonizing punishment. So much so that they even agreed to set him free on the condition that he would speak one good word of their false gods. Before, they weren't planning on setting him free. But after they saw his perseverance, they said, we'll set you free if you say one good thing about our gods. But the iman, his sabr, his patience, and his unwillingness to compromise couldn't bring him to agree to that. The torture, so the torture continued. They would put a rope around his neck and they would order the people in Mecca to drag him around the mountains and the streets of Mecca treating him like a dog. At last, relief came in the form of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, who freed him from slavery and shortly entered into a beautiful exchange with Umayyah bin Khalaf. And Umayyah bin Khalaf remarked, he said, take him for by Allah for by Allah and Uzzah, if you had refused to buy him except for one ounce of gold, I would have sold him to you. But Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, by Allah, if you have refused to sell him except for a hundred ounces of gold, I would still have paid it. From this first highlight of Bilal life, we can truly understand the significance and power of Iman, Sabr, and the unwillingness to compromise. The strength of an individual isn't based on his physical capability, but rather based on his aqidah, his belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and understanding the rulings, what he needs to do in his life. Continuing on, Bilal made hijrah with Rasulullah to Medina, and there he dedicated his life to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and work to spread the idea of Islam across the whole world. And then one day, Abdullah bin Zayd went to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, I had a dream 
of the Adhan, where an angel came and taught me these words. And the Rasulullah said, Where is Bilal? And they called Bilal. And then he, Rasulullah said, Teach these words to Bilal. And for the first time in Islamic history, Bilal went to the top of the Masjid al Nabawi. And with his beautiful voice, he called, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And everyone that was busy in their lives, they paused everything. The workers dropped their work. The traders dropped their trade and their deals and went to masjid, went to the masjid and they see Bilal and Bilal continued to say Come to Salah, come to success and since that day Bilal was known as the Mu'addin of the Messenger of Allah The words that were uttered by Bilal radiallahu anhu when the Muslims were at their weakest in Mecca were the very same words used when the Islamic State of Medina was established and capable. The motto on the day of the Battle of Badr was none other than Ahadun Ahad. And in this battle, Umayyah bin Khalaf, who used to be his master, who used to look down upon him and tortured him, he was killed on that battle. And indeed, it was Bilal bin Rabah al-Habashi radiallahu anhu who did it. Continuing on, the conquest of Mecca was perhaps the greatest victories this ummah has ever witnessed. It stated in ar rahiq al-Makhtum, the sealed nectar, Ibn al-Qayyim described the conquest of Mecca as the greatest one by which Allah honored his religion, messenger, soldiers, and honest party. It's no exaggeration to say that this day was also the peak of Bilal radiallahu anhu's life. Not only did he enter the Kaaba with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to destroy the idols that had infested the sacred house of Allah, but he was also given the honor of ascending the, atop the Kaaba before the entirety of the Muslim army in Quraysh. Here we get a real appreciation of the humility and mercy of Rasulullah who having accomplished one of the greatest victories of his life against those who physically and emotionally harmed him, rejected him and tried to kill him. Did not, but he did not enter as a victor but rather as an embodiment of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ and we have not sent you, O Muhammad, except as a mercy to the world. The Prophet wasallam, being the leader and prophet of the triumphant camp, had every right to ascend atop the Kaaba, declaring the victory of Islam and the Muslims. Instead, he wasallam, chose to elevate what these very people perceived as the lowest of society to the very highest position. position upon the ashes of their old, of their idols, atop the most sacred building in the world. A remarkable moment, demonstrating his, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's true intention for the people being one of teaching, guidance, purification, not humiliation, hatred, and evil. This spectacular scene was symbolic of the, of the justice Islam gave to the oppressed. This was not a publicity stunt, on the behalf of the Prophet ﷺ, or a political campaign to win favor with the oppressed minorities in the Arabian Peninsula. As we have seen, very typical of the political parties here and all across the world, where they try to bring help in the minorities so they can get more votes, so they can get more appreciation by the people. Instead, the reason why Bilal anhu, why Muhammad Sallam told Bilal to go on top of the Kaaba, the motivation for this was for the justice given to the oppressed was simply because it was a clear command from the most just of judges, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence, we see Bilal radiallahu anhu was raised and elevated atop the Kaaba for one single reason. 
to make the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most high as he proceeded to announce the adhan declaring his subhanahu wa ta'ala's supremacy similarly today the destruction of one or two statutes overturning of legislation or removing of politicians will not bring about justice for the black community living in the west or any other oppressed people in the world be it the Palestinians, the Uyghurs, the Kashmiris or the Rohingya rather it is only when the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is made the most high will this world finally witness the true justice and equality it is justly yearning for the life of Bilal radiallahu anhu is symbolic of the very journey of Islam itself it began but as a word leading to his domination of the Arabian Peninsula before spreading to the rest of the world after the tragic event of the death of Rasulullah Bilal refused to make the Adhan any longer the same man whose mighty bow struck like a flash of lightning in the face of the Mushrikeen under the most burdensome of torture could not bring himself to recite the words Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah for that would cause his voice to vanish from the unbearable heartache he felt Bilal anhu vowed the remaining part of his life to fight in jihad determined to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having done the best deed he subhanahu wa ta'ala loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala however strengthened his heart for one final pronouncement of the Adhan during the Khilaf of Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu the commander of the faithful when he visited Syria the Muslims entreated him they persuaded Bilal radiallahu anhu to call one last Adhan for them there the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam witnessed a most awe-inspiring scene which immediately brought back beloved memories of their companionship with the greatest of creation sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there they wept as they never did before and Umar radiallahu anhu the most strongly Bilal radiallahu anhu's noble life ended in Syria fighting in the cause of Allah so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just as he had wanted beneath the dust of Damascus today there lies the body of one of the greatest men of humankind in serving Islam may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on Bilal radiallahu anhu soul reunite him with his beloved companion and bring forth the likes of him from amongst this noble ummah once again أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولنساء المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم in the name of Allah, all praises to be to, to be be to Allah, and blessings and peace be upon the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Today, we live in times where holding on to the Deen is as hard and as difficult as holding on to hot coals, like those placed beneath Bilal radiallahu anhu's bare body. Anas ibn Malik reported the Messenger of Allah. Peace, be, peace and blessings be upon him said a time of patience will come to people in which adhering to one's religion is like grasping a hot coal from the story of Bilal radiallahu anhu we see two ideas that were presented and lessons that we can learn from obviously there are much many many more lessons we can learn but I want to focus on these two the first being sabr and patience and the second being the unwillingness to compromise and both go hand in hand in regard to sabr we see Bilal radiallahu anhu enduring the punishment being dealt on him and being treated as an animal just because of his skin complexion and being a slave but despite all this punishment he continued to remain steadfast and continued to say ahadun ahad without stuttering 
He was so patient and resilient that the kuffar decided to change the goal of their punishment from saying bad about the, about the Prophet to just saying one good word about their gods and they even offered to free him. But what? He continued to refuse and remain steadfast. And how does that link to us today? When we see, when we're going around, whether it be our workplace, whether it be at school, whether it be out in society, we're hiding our Islam because what? We're afraid that the people around us, the non-Muslims around us, might not accept us. We're shy. We're shy, why? Because we're afraid that we might have to go under some seclusion, that people might not like us. Let's take, take one second to think about that. Bilal radiallahu anhu suffered the greatest punishment ever. Dragged across Mecca, the mountains naked. In extreme heat. And continued to say, Ahadun Ahad. That is the true meaning of patience. Sabr. While we, all of us here, and across society, we are afraid to say, I'm a Muslim. Whether it be at school or at work. You're afraid to say, oh, I need to go pray for the five prayers during school. Or whether it be at work as well. You're afraid to go tell your boss, what? I need to go pray. I have to go, I have, I have actually, I'm fasting. And even beyond that, when we receive people bringing about the ideas of liberalism, trying to compromise with Islam, we say, okay, Let's push it for now, it's fine. Because we don't want to make because we don't want the people to be against us, the non-Muslims against us. Think about that. And then in regards to compromise, we see in the same situation, Bilal radiallahu anhu, he refused to compromise with his deen and continued to utter what? Ahadun Ahad. Despite the unbelievable pain that he was going through. And we also see with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was offered all the riches and power in the Arabian Peninsula just to compromise in his deen and stop the spreading of the message of Islam. And during that time, the Muslims were under unbelievable torture and punishment. There were also a very small number. And the followers of the Prophet sallallahu were also, they were growing tired because of the constant stress that they were put in. But what? The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he refused to compromise and stayed straight in the path Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted. And again, where does that place us today? As Muslims around the world, and even as youth, we see ourselves crumbling left and right, compromising with our deen just to fit in with our society. We see our own so-called Muslim leaders here and outside of America unwilling to go help the millions of the Muslims suffering on the world. Why? In fear of their pockets and power if they went against the government such as America or Britain or France. And even amongst our Muslim community here, we see the liberal ideas being passed around. And we see people what? Accepting these ideas. And what if the Muslim community itself, these organizations that are supposed to be in charge of making sure the Muslims are going on the right track, if they are compromising, how do you think the youth will be? What? Even the Muslim youth have fallen for these ideas of compromise. These ideas are spread throughout our schools and colleges. This is to the youth and also the parents as a reminder. The ideas of the LGBTQ+, liberalism, feminism, etc. are being propagated among the youth so much that we've grown accustomed to hearing it and see no wrong with it. If I told one, if I told one youth here, what do you think about rights? Is it okay for you to be free? They would say, yes, what's wrong with rights? Everyone has their own rights, everyone can be free. But we know in Islam what? The idea of freedom, the idea of rights, it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
It doesn't come from nowhere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives you these commands. So we actually aren't free, but rather we're the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But these may be subtle ideas can actually be very detrimental to the youth. Because later on, when they see, oh, why am I being forced to do this? Why am I being forced to do that? Oh, I saw my, my parents. I saw the elders, the other elder Muslims. I saw the Muslim politicians around me. They were compromising, they were deen. They were saying, it's okay. Let's go support the LGBTQ+. Why? If I scratch their back this time, they'll scratch my back later. Let's go support the ideas that they're giving. Even though they're, they might be a little wrong, but it's fine. We'll get a benefit after it later on. The youth, they're not blind. They're not deaf. They see that. And they will take it and they will learn it. And later on, we all question ourselves, why did my son, why did my daughter leave Islam? We go looking around the shiyukh. Why, why, tell me why. It's because of this idea of compromise. It's because we aren't willing to stay steadfast to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْضِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْضِ فَمَا جَزَاءُ مِنْ وَمَنْ جَزَاءُ مَنْ يَفْعَلُ ذَلِكَ مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا جِزْءٌ خِزْيٌ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ يُرَدُّونَ إِلَى أَشَدِّ الْعَذَابِ وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Do you then believe in some parts of the book and disbelieve in others? So what can be the punishment of those among you who do that? Accept disgrace in the present life and on a day of judgment and they shall be turned to the most severe punishment and Allah is not unaware of what you do. We are afraid that the society might push us back. We are afraid here and outside of America that the governments might be against us because we are under the quote, I'm a Muslim, I'm a stranger. My ideas are strange to these people. <clears throat> but we forget about a surah that many of us have memorized. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ تَرَ كَيْفَ فَعَلَ رَبُّكَ بِعَادِ إِرَمَ ذَاتِ الْعِمَادِ أَلَّتِ لَمْ يُخْلَقْ مِثْلُهَا فِي الْبِلَادِ وَتَمُودَ الَّذِينَ جَابُوا الصَّخْرَ بِالْوَادِ وَفِرْعَوْنَ ذِي الْأَوْتَادِ أَلَّذِينَ طَغَوْا فِي الْبِلَادِ فَأَكْثَرُوا فِيهَا الْفَسَادِ فَصَبَّ عَلَيْهِمْ رَبُّكَ صَوْتَ عَذَابِ Have you not considered how your Lord dealt with Ad, who had lofty pillars, the likes of whom had never been created in the land, and Thamud, who carved out the rocks in the valleys, and with Pharaoh, owner of the stakes, whom oppressed with the lands, within the lands, and increased therein the corruption. So your Lord poured upon them a scourge of punishment. These were people that hold one of the biggest monarchies ever. These are people that used to build their houses out of mountains. While here we're struggling to get machines to make houses, it's normal houses that aren't even on mountains. They would carve their houses out of the mountains with ease. But what? Because they didn't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were ignorant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought down their punishment. So who are we to be afraid of not being accepted by the society around us? When we know what lies for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment. We have to be like a Sahaba in Bilal radiallahu anhu and commit our life for the servitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to understand our deen and apply it fully in our lives. It is the only way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا. This day I have perfected for you your religion and have bestowed upon you my bounty in full measure. And have been pleased to assign for you Islam as your religion, a way of life. Brothers and sisters, let's understand our deen the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to understand it. Go and read the Quran, understand its meaning and its rules. Read the sunnah of our beloved Prophet وسلم, and understand it and apply it in your life. And know your role to carry it to the people, Muslims and non-Muslims, 
without deviation from he the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam's path and without compromising. This is the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He never compromised. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama salaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka Hamidul Majid. Allahumma barak ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka Hamidul Majid. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع مجيب الدعوات Oh Allah, we seek your favor to let our hearts be full of your gratitude and keep our tongue moist with your remembrance. Oh Allah, guide us to know what is good, make us benefit from what we have learned and increase our knowledge. Oh Allah, give us in this world that which is good and in the hereafter that is what which is much better and save us from the torment of the fire. O oh Allah, provide protection to our brothers and sisters and our children of Hashem, Palestine, Yemen, Afghanistan, Kashmir, Burma, Iraq, Pakistan, and all the other parts of the world. O oh Allah, keep us and them on the straight path and fill their hearts with patience and tranquility. O oh Allah, unite the Muslim Ummah and provide the Muslim to the righteous guided Muslims and establish Islam as augmented by the righteous guided Khulafa. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. ربنا لا تؤخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به وعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين إباد الله إن الله يمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون تذكر الله يذكركم وادعوه يسجب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وعز وأجل وأتم وهم وأكبر وأقم الصلاة